Uh, there we are, lovely. Um, as you can see, we're going to be talking about driving culture change through DevOps and vice versa, and we've already done a little bit of um, uh, some introductions, so uh, we can skip fairly rapidly over the next slide, I think. Um, cool. So yeah, thank you very much, Sarah, uh, for saving me the uh, the effort of doing the the introductions for yourself on this one. Um, so that leads me to introduce myself. Really, I'm the one uh, on the right hand side uh, on this slide. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, I'm a director of technology at Publicist Sapient. Uh, and in my 18 years or so in the tech industry, uh, one of the things I've learned uh, is that technology alone won't bring you success and that we must understand the relationship between uh, people, processes, behaviors, and technology in order to truly succeed. And I think this is where the, sort of the key aspect of culture comes into it. Uh, so I'm very keen to uh, share some of the stuff that we've learned uh, over the last few years and also get some questions in and, and also hear other people's stories as well. And without uh, much further ado, I think one of the things that we'd have to do is really uh, start the conversation by asking uh, what do we mean by culture? Um, and I've got a quote here from uh, Jocelyn Goldfine uh, and I really, I, I, I I can't, I can't put it any better than myself, which is why I want to use this quote more than anything else. Um, I, I think to say that your culture is a result of the behaviours you, you reward and punish is, uh, is, pre is pretty much absolutely spot on. Uh, if, you think of, uh, if you think about how organisations uh, reinforce certain behaviours, uh, then that really does become sort of a reflection of what your, uh, what your culture is all about. Um, the, re, the Jocelyn Gold, um, Goldfine, by the way, was the head of engineering at Facebook for a while. And before that, I think she was the VP of engineering uh, at uh, VMware. And this quote came out of a session uh, where they were essentially being asked uh, what makes your organis organization successful. And all the delegates at the session were sort of writing things down on the board, like high trust and all of that kind of stuff. And, um, all the good things that, that really they felt made the organization really good. Uh, and the facilitator essentially took a look at the board and said, well, there's that, that pretty much encapsulates your culture right there. And that's, that's pretty much what you're looking at. That's what we've described. Um, and I think, yeah, uh, that, that quote just pretty much sums everything up for me. So without uh, dwelling too much on it, and hopefully everybody's kind of on the same page there when we kind of talk about what culture is, but we'll move on uh, to the first... Um, question for everyone. Um, does your organization have a DevOps culture? So what I want to do is just get a little bit of audience interaction here. Uh, and if you've got your mobile phones, uh, or indeed your laptop, uh, then head over to menti.com uh, and use the code 98448589. Uh, and you should be able to vote on whether your organization has a DevOps culture. I should be going on that site as well to vote. So it's 98, 44, 85, 9. This is... Um, this is one of those uh, slides, uh, one of those questions, I should say. Well, I don't know is uh, a perfectly valid answer. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up being one of the bigger ones. Um, but yeah, it's, does, does your organization have a DevOps culture? Depends on a lot of things. I guess the size of your organization might be one. Um, the, in many organizations, there is no one unifying uh, culture. That There's lots of microcultures and various different subcultures. Um, so it may be, I don't know, it may be many uh, answers, it, it could be some of them, but I'd like to kind of get a view of, of how many people think that they've got there, how many people think they've cracked it, and uh, uh, how many people are on that journey. So it looks like we've got, well, most people are actually saying that they're on that journey uh, at the moment, which is fantastic. I think that's pretty much the, the, the target audience for this talk. Um, 
on to the next uh, next slide, which is why culture change is is necessary. Um, this is this is a could be seen as a fairly straightforward one because basically DevOps is about bringing Dev and Ops together uh, and ensuring that smooth continuous flow of value through your products uh, into production. Um, but surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, some organizations, some traditional organizations, you could say, uh, have struggled with this kind of uh, concept in the past. Uh, and there are reasons for that. You could argue that um, there's imposing incentives. Uh, we, talk, we talk a lot about dev and ops being incentivized very differently. Dev to try and create new products, make change, and then ops who are sort of incentivized for stability and pretty much basically stopping change from happening. And that's, that, those are the sort of two opposing incentives. Um, and this DevOps world is about bringing those together under one unified incentive, which is to try and get great products in the hands of the customers. Um, but it's also a little bit more than that. Organizations have been structured traditionally uh, more around uh, the department uh, rather than the product. So if you sort of, if you sort of turn that on its side a little, and you focus on a product which has a team that supports it with all the capabilities uh, that flow through the production lifecycle, uh, then uh, you're, you're more aligned to, to de DevOps. And of course, uh, there's different skill sets and tools in some organizations. Uh, you may find that uh, different departments use wildly different tools, different processes, uh, and have different skill sets. Whereas in the DevOps world, we like to share a lot uh, from each other uh, and, and sort of converge more or less around some of those practices and tools. So here's the, uh, here's the crux, here's the where does the DevOps fit in uh, piece, which is uh, it, it, it's really, I think that the key part here, what I want to focus on is that, is that data is a huge driver for this. So data allows us uh, to be able to, exp data is basically evidence. Uh, and data, DevOps is, is full of cracking great tools that allow us to expose uh, a whole, whole great deal of evidence to show that DevOps truly works and shows what is the right kind of culture that we want to move to. I mean, in a second, we'll sort of talk a little bit more about how we can introduce KPIs to try and help us find uh, the, the target that we're trying to move to uh, and expose the data that, that, that supports that. But essentially what I wanted to say here is that you can use the data to try and advertise the success of DevOps, but also you can use it to, to uh, shift your, your culture as well. Um, I think a good example is if you take a look at some of the, 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 the tools that you would use in a, a standard continuous delivery system like Jenkins, Sonar, uh, and so on and so forth, it's producing a great deal of data that's, that's evidence that uh, you, this, this culture might be the right way or the using these tools is, is successful. You can expose the fact that your test coverage is improving or in generally speaking, your, your code quality is better. You can expose telemetry from your production systems to show that uh, stability is increasing. So you can use that kind of weight of evidence to say that this new process of, of sharing, this new culture of, of DevOps is actually working. So we've got the data to prove it. We've got the telemetry. We can say we can show that the defect leakage rate is decreasing. We can show that the production stability is improving. So it's really a two-way street. So having that culture uh, of of being data driven helps you embed DevOps and DevOps at the same time by using these KPIs, which we'll see in the next slide, uh, also helps us to reinforce that culture. So how do we do that? Uh, the question is around picking the right KPIs and they're going to be very relevant to, to you and specific to the kind of culture that you're trying to target or, or the goals that you're trying to achieve. So, for example, if you wanted to um, create a, a more innovative culture, you could po possibly expose some KPIs around number of um, uh, experiments that you've launched, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, I, I think that's a little bit of a vanity metric, the number of experiments, but um, you might want to dive a little bit deeper and be a little bit more uh, qualitative uh, around the success of some of those experiments. Uh, but there's some, if you're trying to create an improvement in, in reliability, then there's, there's obviously uptime, mean time to recovery and all of those kind of statistics, quality improvements as well. So if you're trying to create a, a culture of high quality, then there's loads of, of quality metrics that can be 
uh, exposed. And these are some of the ones that we've used extensively over the last few years uh, to try and create what we would call a more of a holistic DevOps culture and try and get that data-driven approach to understanding uh, where the value is. So on to the next question on Menti. So on Mentimeter on your phone now, the, the screen should have updated and you'll have a, uh, a, the next question in front of you, which will ask you, how frequently do you deploy to production? So this is one of the, um, one of the metrics that we've uh, been tracking over the last couple of years. And there is, according to, if you look, read at some of the reports like State of DevOps report and so on, uh, a correlation between uh, the frequency of deployments into production uh, and uh, the engineering success. Um, and it is, uh, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to deploy every month uh, or every week or every day or whatever it is, uh, but having the capability of doing it is pretty much what we uh, like to focus on. And per sprint seems to be the, the sort of the most popular. Um, it's, it's, we, we've asked this question very regularly <laughs> and, uh, and sprint seems to be naturally uh, the, the, the most popular. As you might expect, uh, a lot of organizations running Scrum. Um, so yeah, unsurprisingly, it's, it's in the lead here as well. Just give that a moment for the results to come in. But it's interesting to see the number of organizations that are now going from releasing software every month, every quarter, or something like that to multiple times a day. Um, and the way that that has changed over the last couple of years, if I'd asked this question, two or three years ago, I would, ex I would have expected a lot more people saying monthly uh, than daily. Uh, and now we're seeing a lot more people saying, yeah, we're, we're deploying daily. And what that tells me is that if you're still in that bracket, where it's quarterly or monthly or something like that, you know, getting a little behind the curve and, and you really need to up your game and, and, and start to look at what areas you can improve to start to get back on that, uh, on that tangent and on that, sorry, on that, um, on that curve and, and, and try and get what uh, get to what um, the State of DevOps report uh, sorry, explains as a sort of elite performer within the DevOps space. Cool, excellent, thank you. There were some good results in there. But per sprint again, weekly and daily are actually outnumbering quarterly <laughs> and monthly, which is a sign of the times. Um, so yeah, we've, we've spoken there about sort of the DevOps metrics, the DevOps KPIs, um, what that can tell you about your performance uh, and what that can tell you about how you're shifting your culture. Um, but that's th those are just the DevOps things. What, what else can we do more broadly uh, to, to try and influence culture that is still engineering related and DevOps can be a driver for? Well, there's quite a few things here. Uh, we talk about center of excellence. Uh, I'm sure everyone's familiar with that concept. In fact, there's quite a bit of interesting uh, content around that the, the success or perhaps not success in, in, in centers of excellence and depending on the way that they're implemented uh, in the 2019 State of DevOps report. Um, communities of practice, hackathons and, and coding dojos, which we're just about to hear uh, a little bit uh, about from Sarah, um, and pilot projects um, as well and training courses, which uh, we'll also touch on a little later. Um, I'm going to hand over, so, so that, sorry, just to, to wrap up that, that, that's pretty much about scaling it out, let's say. Um, and we will touch on this a little later, but for now I'm going to hand over to Sarah. I'm going to be driving the slides, so Sarah will, will be prompting me uh, to move on to the slides. Uh, and uh, without further ado, then it's, it's over to you, Sarah. Cool. Thank you, James. So, shall we move forward to the case study? Right. Cool, can you hear me okay? Awesome, so um, we're gonna talk a little bit uh, about what we've been doing within Lloyd's Banking Group, um, supported at times by Publicist Sapient on this and just bring to life a little bit around the DevOps culture that James has been talking about. So uh, Lloyd's Banking Group, some stats, I think James, just on the next slide, if you wouldn't mind, um, because I appreciate, I'm sure the audience today isn't, uh, just in the UK, but, but across Europe, and you perhaps don't know who Lloyd's Banking Group are. We are um, the largest UK retail bank with 17 million, 17 million digitally active customers, as you can see there, 26 million customers in total, and you know one in four UK banking transactions pass through uh, our, our systems each day. So our software engineers know all about delivering at scale, that's for sure. And 
of course, always adapting to change and most uh, importantly, keeping our customers safe. So, so that's a little bit about the context of, of, of who we are in, in the UK. And I think if we move on to the next slide, you know, we've been on our own uh, journey within uh, Lloyd's Banking Group over the last three years. We've been changing our ways of working in order to respond better to our customers' needs. So, you know, that's, that's the driver. We've got multidisciplined labs uh, aligned to customer journey. So a customer journey would be something like, uh, I want to buy a home. So that would in, perhaps, you know, it, it include the, uh, the whole mortgage journey. Uh, we use a product backlog based approach and our software engineers are, are at the heart of these labs. You know, they own the pipeline. Um, they are automating or encouraged to automate as much as possible. Uh, to James's uh, last survey, they're deploying more frequently and they're living these, uh, living these DevOps values. But, you know, for many, that was, that was a new way of working. Three years ago, when we started on this journey, um, you know, it, it wasn't uh, embedded in, in, in the way we operated. And, uh, you know, for those of us who've been in the, in the industry for a long time, then, you know, IT has been viewed in, in many, many different ways. So changing the culture was going to be a key, key part of, of our success and building an engineering culture that focused on experimentation and collaboration and continuous learning you know, was not going to happen overnight. So, uh, so what did we do? That's the, uh, that's the next slide. So what did we do? Well, I think a lot of this, um, you know, really comes down to the first bullet point there, which is understand the audience. You know, perhaps the audience, um, like our software engineers, had seen organisational changes come and go before. You know, we've had lots of different new ways of working. What would make it feel different this time? Our software engineers were curious by nature. Obviously, they, you know, that's technology and exploring uh, new technologies was in their DNA. So they wanted to learn in an experience based way. You know, so if we get them in a room and just talk to them with a lot of PowerPoint slides for eight hours, then they're probably they're probably going to zone out. Even, you know, we've done that a few times and, and it kind of works OK if all the presentations are techie stuff, but it's not it's not their natural environment. So we want something more practical, more engineering, -y, you know, challenging and, and, and really sort of hands on. Uh, and we needed something that appealed to their identity as well. You know, they were software engineers first and foremost, and perhaps bank employees secondary. So we needed to be a little bit less corporate. And we wanted a bold feel to our cultural initiatives that could create this sense of sense of FOMO, this fear of missing out around our events. And uh, those were sort of some of the things we were tapping into around understanding our audience. So we put all those ingredients into our sort of cocktail shaker of creati creativity. Uh, and we came up with um, our concept and, and branding for uh, what we call Reboot. So uh, Reboot, as you can see, there's some lovely stickers on, on a laptop showing some of the engineering events that we've done. Uh, and we've created Reboot. It's a celebration of all things technology. And we bring it all together in a day long event. We wanted lots of tech talks to share knowledge, raise awareness of key technologies and the way the bank was evolving. And they wanted those to be accessible, not just to our software engineers, but to the wider Lloyds Banking Group colleagues, those who are curious about technology. We wanted cool sort of tech demos, robots and the like. We wanted education sessions where people could get hands on and learn new skills. And we wanted stalls where you could wander around and talk to suppliers or different tech functions from within the bank. But most of all, we wanted a hackathon so the engineers could work in teams, experiment with cloud based technologies and have some fun during the day creating something. It was competitive. There was going to be decent prizes at the end. And of course, you know, winners would be announced and, and there'd be beer and pizza all around. So that was quite, uh, that was quite our aspiration and that we negotiated with suppliers and partners to help us put on our very first event in London in November, 2018. And, and we opened uh, the event for registrations within uh, the organization. We plugged it hard. We sent out sort of quirky teasers, uh, encouraging uh, folks to sign up and uh, we, got we gradually got 350 people to sign up for the day. We sent them reminders of how great it was going to be. And uh, we invited the hackers 
to lunch and learn sessions so they could get hands on and up to speed with the tools and the platform that they would be using on the day. So they'd be absolutely ready to hit the ground running when they came along. Now, that was quite ambitious. Uh, did I sleep much the night before? No, too right, I didn't. You know, what if the venue was half empty? What if the Wi-Fi didn't work properly? What if it was just raining in London in November and people couldn't be bothered to commute in on a, on a Friday? Well, it, it was a it was a nerve biting, sort of nail biting, nerve jangling time. Um, so let's see what happened. We've just got a video coming up. Um, and it's only about a minute and a half. If there's any lag in the in the video quality or anything like that, then just bear with us. It's it's not very long. Welcome to Reboot, it's Lloyd's first ever engineering hackathon, bringing creative people together with technical people here at Codenode, one of London's coolest tech venues. Uh, welcome to Reboot. Woo, yeah. Modern, agile, iterative way of creating things and learning. Behind me are 120 hackers, all split into teams of five, and they're going to spend the day solving one of four separate challenges. Anybody can take part in the hack. It doesn't matter what their role is in the organization, and it's certainly not about hierarchies. All you engineers who are into technology, you're actually artists in a way. I started my career in a startup, and so I know what it's like to work within small teams in a very agile and pacey way. And I've always wanted to demonstrate that we can do that here at Lloyd's. It's about impact, reach, and actually showing that we can do it, which is what the hackathon's here to demonstrate today. Well, it's been an amazingly full day. You know, when you put creativity and technology together in a creative, supportive environment, that's when beautiful things happen. I've really enjoyed being part of today. Thanks for watching. See you next time. So I think you get the idea there, although we were, sort of slight, we were slightly out of sync with the, with the words and, uh, and pictures, but don't worry about that. So yes, I mean, it, it was a success. And, and of course I filmed it. And I filmed it because we wanted to show those who weren't there what they'd missed out on. And there was a longer event of the day showing the pictures and the, uh, and the prize giving, et cetera. And it had amazing feedback. I couldn't have been more bowled over by the guys that came up to me and said, you know, it's the best day they'd ever had at work. Could we do the next one over two days? And, and, and so it went on. And so, of course, the phone never stopped ringing. And Sarah, when is, when is Reboot going to come to Bristol or Manchester or Edinburgh? And, and so we, you know, we took it out on the road. So as you can see from the screen there, we went up to Manchester. Uh, Manchester was awesome because we were able to, with the help of Sapient, uh, really get uh, the visuals there to redress the, 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 conference, the convention centre in Manchester with our, with our Reboot designs and logo and it gave it a, a really sort of edgy look and excited all the participants as they arrived and uh, and the great artwork at all our events that that publicist sapient help us with um, is key to making the event feel different uh, making it feel like a reboot event but also because we turn up for the day and, and do this big event then we encourage the participants to take some of the posters and and large artwork away with them at the end of the day. And, and then these things reappear in our Lloyds Banking Group offices in the, in the sort of tech areas. And that gives them a lasting impression of the day, reminds them of, of, of what, what fun they had. Uh, and, and that kind of helps really Im embed the culture that we're, that we're trying to, uh, you know, instill in everyone. And uh, that, that one was, a, you know, it was a great day. We did it uh, in, in Bristol as well at a, a fabulous museum called We the Curious, which was absolutely perfect for, for a technology event. So, um, and, it, and, and it's really just sort of grown since then. I think we've got an infographic, James, that kind of shows kind of some of the numbers now uh, around, um, you know, how big it's come. I mean, the, the artwork there was, is fantastic. And we always have a sticker for each event. Uh, so it's become a bit of kudos then to gather as many reboot stickers on your laptop as you, as you can. And, uh, you know, and folks come along, it really gets their creative juices going. We've, um, you know, we've got 
much bigger now. Um, the last one we did, uh, we were getting to near sort of 500 attendees and they now tackle real bank challenges and we get product owners along to set the challenge for the hackers to work on. Uh, and we had some great ones at the last one around sustainability and responsible business. Just how we can become greener as an organization, how we can support customers who want to make greener choices. So it, it's, um, it, it's really been awesome the, the way, it, way it's grown. Uh, but of course we've learned things along the way about building the culture. So Reboot might be our sort of flagship item, um, but you know, there are, there are you know, uh, there are other things that my team do uh, all, all the time to sort of oil the wheels of the community through smaller events, connecting teams together, sharing stories and videos of success. And I think we've got a slide with the lessons learned, James, but uh, culture does need a helping hand sometimes in organizations. You know, we provide the platforms for collaboration. Um, we still struggle to get enough self-organized events. So, so we do need to be there oiling the wheels. Um, we provide psychological safety at these events and it allows um, colleagues to learn uh, and just get that headspace to learn new technologies. And it often leads to them saying, oh, actually, um, I learned so much so quickly during the day, I'm going to continue that learning now because I can actually go on and, uh, and, and do much more. So I think just tying back into what you said, James, gathering data on success, you know, sometimes folks think that, um, you know, we gather data in a true geek style um, from the most important talks to how many likes and watches a video gets so we can spot the hot topics and shape our ongoing events calendar. And uh, that is really important to us so that we can build on, uh, you know, on what we've, been, what we've been doing so far and adapting to, to our audience. Um, we've had to adapt this year. We had a great reboot in February, uh, but now we've had to go online with an iPlayer style reboot on demand channel for our content. Uh, we're exploring virtual hackathons um, uh, and that will be the new normal for a while uh, but I do hope we'll feel the buzz of those reboot against events in the in the not too distant future so uh, that's my story back to you James. Lovely thank you Sarah. Um, yeah I just want to tie up uh, that section with the with this question of did it work um, and fortunately um, I've been involved in a, a lot of the of the fallout I guess of, of this scaled out approach that Sarah has been leading. Um, so I've been on the ground working with the teams uh, as a sort of a transformation lead, uh, watching and understanding what kind of improvements they're, they're putting in place uh, and, and taking a look at some of the metrics. And so these are some of the ones that we've gathered over the last uh, 18 months, two years. Um, and we've seen some, this is across various different teams and various different sectors as well. So we're looking at from, from insurance through risk to um, consumer onboarding, all those kind of various different parts of the bank. Um, and you know, we are seeing a productivity improvements uh, of around 10 to 20%. Uh, we've got a 20, 30% uh, faster speed to market, which is fantastic. Um, and then we've got that quality aspect of it as well of uh, a fewer defects uh, around that 25 to 30% mark. Um, this, I, this is actually incredible because these do <laughs> these do align perfectly with the some of the stats out of the 2019 state of devops report about what they predict uh that they, these kind of numbers should look like in terms of improvements uh by in um by, by um following devops practices basically um yeah so uh, and not uh, at last but certainly not least um there's the improvement on uh, people's happiness index as well um, which is something that we've been tracking for, for pretty much the whole journey as well. Um, <clears throat> now I just want to quickly talk about, so those are the easy bits to, to, to measure. Uh, so we're easy to measure that your time to market and all that, that kind of stuff. We've got great stats coming out of things like uh, the Atlassian suite of products like Jira and, and all of that. Um, uh, but how do you measure culture? Because um, it is one of those great intangibles. Um, so, well, before I actually go any further, I think what I'll do is, I, is I, I'll throw that one out um, and, and ask, is it possible uh, to actually measure culture? Um, please head on over to, to Menti uh, and you should see your, your, your slide <laughs> um, asking you this very question. And, oh, it couldn't get much more evenly spread at the moment, 3% <laughs> apiece. Uh, yeah, it's culture is 
is renowned as, as one of those great intangibles that, you know, that as, as I mentioned earlier on, there are subcultures, microcultures. Uh, how do you measure them? Um, it's, it's something that we've struggled with for many, many years. Uh, there's probably no direct route of, of, of measuring it. Um, there's team cultures, which might be a lot easier to measure, but how does that bubble up into what we would call your organizational culture or the culture, the specific culture that we're trying to measure of uh, your DevOps culture? Do you, do you have a DevOps culture and can you therefore me measure it? Um, yeah, uh, I'm not surprised that this, <laughs> the results have come in as, as they have with a pretty evenly spread between yes, no, and I don't know. Uh, and 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 yeah, I, I certainly uh, I, I fit into one of those uh, uh, the, I don't know uh, things. I couldn't tell you with any 100% uh, concrete evidence that that you can directly measure it, but we have been trying. Um, we've got a few things that we've been doing, uh, and largely at a kind of a team level, um, but it's based on some very solid science. Um, and I think <laughs> I was just about to move on and, uh, and the slides perfectly uh, ended on 33% apiece. Uh, <laughs> so no conclusive results on that one. I think we'll call that one a score draw. Um, but here's essentially what, uh, what we've been following in terms of trying to measure culture. At a team level, <clears throat> uh, there is some great work uh, out there in the marketplace. Uh, I, I believe uh, Nicole Forsgren uh, has had a great deal to do with uh, a lot of this. I've been following her work uh, for several years, um, sort of uh, producing a quantitative analysis of, of how you do uh, measure culture. Uh, and there's a white paper or a report, basically, which is called Measure Efficiency, Effectiveness and Culture to Optimize DevOps Transformation. Uh, and it's uh, essentially a bunch of metrics for DevOps initiatives. Uh, and it was uh, compiled uh, from a DevOps enterprise forum. Uh, now that's available uh, on the internet uh, and it's well worth a read. Uh, and there is a section in there that, that does cover uh, some of the work that Nicole has been doing uh, around measuring, directly measuring culture, directly or indirectly measuring culture. Um, and one of the things that she uh, has adapted is essentially the Westrom uh, model which, uh, yes, I do have a slide for that, good. Um, and this is, these are the questions that they use uh, in order to try and derive an answer. And, and it's, uh, it, it essentially, it places organizations on a scale ranging from pathological, which is kind of power oriented, uh, through to generative, which is a performance oriented um, organization. Uh, and these questions are asked uh, on, a, on a survey um, style approach and with a kind of a Likert scale uh, in order to answer them. Um, and yeah, so the questions are, are my team information is actively sought or statements, I should say, uh, and on my team failures are learning opportunities and me uh, messengers of them are not punished. Uh, and on my team responsibilities are shared, on my team cross-functional collaboration is encouraged and rewarded, on my team failure, uh, failure causes inquiry, and on my team new ideas are welcomed. And these, these questions are then kind of sent out periodically so you can see any change um, in, uh, in, in the culture. And also I think it's fair to say, uh, what I've been doing is I've made some slight changes. I've reduced these down to three questions and I ask them very frequently on a kind of a one-to-one -one scale with my uh, people within my teams that I work with. Um, so it, they, one, they can one be second, adapted, please, can be used. I yeah. hate to interrupt you, but we are running short of time, please. We are actually wrapping up on the, I think the, the okay. next couple of slides. So <laughs> uh, we'll move on to the, to the next one, uh, which is essentially what can we take away um, before we wrap it up with a, with a kind of uh, a getting started uh, list. Um, two, two things, two big things really. Um, Technology is moving way too fast. So don't wait around for the right technology to come along before you decide to, to jump on board with that. Um, do experiment, just make a start. Um, but secondly, uh, expect resistance. Uh, there's a fantastic book called Fearless Change by Linda Rising, um, which if you're involved in any kind of program like this, uh, I would encourage you to, to read and engage with Linda. Uh, she's got great ideas about how to turn sort of pessimists into sort of cheerleaders uh, for the cause. Um, so really do, uh, do, do, do go down that path and do listen to the people who have concerns and bring them along on the journey with you. And then finally, 
uh, we've got a wrap up, which is essentially your getting started guide. And this really is a getting started. This isn't the, the scaling up and scaling out bits that Sarah's talked about and how to make that a, a success on a, on a grand organizational scale. This is, the, this is how, to, how to get that ball rolling. Uh, really, it's just a sort of a seven step guide uh, to what we've done and what we've done time and time again in various different areas uh, within Lloyd's Banking Group. And it's a, it, it's, so it's a tried and, uh, tried and tested um, a routine, pretty much. Um, and the, when we get to the point eight there, which is scaling up or scaling out, it really should say, uh, that's where a lot of the work that, that Sarah has been leading uh, really com comes into play. Um, but essentially, uh, getting that, getting that, uh, that those KPIs sorted, as we mentioned earlier on, uh, and ensuring that uh, you've got a good product or a pilot uh, that you can use to sort of show the success uh, of what you're trying to implement. Baselining those data, uh, those data sets is, is super, super important because you want to be able to demonstrate that you went from here to here. Uh, and without the here's where we were part, uh, it's very, very hard to, to, to show that compelling story of the, the delta, the difference that you've made. Um, and I can't, I can't stress that enough. Baseline your data. If it takes you weeks and weeks just to do that, it's well worth doing. Um, introducing those tools and new ways of working, uh, it's easier said than done. Um, but once you've done that and you've got the data, that data can then tell that story. Um, and then as, uh, as, as Sarah was telling us, so publicizing this, that, that journey, uh, get it out there and then scale out and that's pretty much uh what we'll leave you with and i think uh on that we've got a, a question and answers is pretty much the, the last piece cool. thank you very much uh james and sarah um it is really impressive again to see that uh moving towards a DevOps culture is not a linear program. You can just can roll out or something like that. It's really an, an adventure with, with lots of different angles to, to look at and lots of activities from different angles to include everybody. That's really what, what we could learn from this talk. Um, I'm really sorry that really uh, we ran out of time because the next sessions are waiting. Uh, that's the reason why I'd like to say thank you so much for this really interesting talks. And now I'm, I'm pretty sure that in the future we are not only talking about Netflix and Spotify's being the DevOps unicorn, but maybe also about the Lloyds Bank. That is cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so if you um, um, follow the rest of the day, um, please don't miss the exhibition. There is a booth with, a, with an interesting uh, technology. Please talk to them and have a look. That is going to be interesting. And of course, don't miss to rate all the talks you've seen, this keynote and all the following talks. Give you feedback because speakers are always getting feedback, uh, keen on getting feedback because it feels a little bit weird when you're just talking to the nothing out there. Please give them some reaction, positive, negative, constructive, whatever you prefer. Every reaction is good, and that's what we also know from the DevOps culture. Give feedback, communicate, share. Thank you so much, and enjoy the rest of the day and many, many sessions, and see you in the afternoon for the little conference wrap-up. Goodbye, and have a good day.